Hey there, Wargamers, Justin, our Patreon. Today, we're going to be talking about what Battletech era might be good for you to play in. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in today. If you are new here, please alpha strike that like and subscribe button. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for tuning in today to help continue to support what I do and help these videos in the channel grow. That's it. Today, we're going to talk about what Battletech era is good for you to play in. So for those of you who are new here and maybe tuning in for the first time, I'd like to welcome you guys to the world of Battletech. Whether you're new to the game or a veteran player looking for uh, fresh inspiration, one of the coolest aspects of Battletech is its rich history spanning centuries. Each era offers something unique from gritty conflicts to high-tech all-out wars. But with so many eras, how do you choose the best fit for your playstyle? So let's go ahead and break that down. If you're a fan of gritty, low-tech warfare, where every mech and piece of salvage counts, the Succession War era might be for you. This is from 2786 to 3049. In this time, technology is scarce and battles feel desperate and raw. It's all about strategy, resource management, and the importance of every unit. Now players may appreciate the simplicity of fewer tech options, while veterans can enjoy the tactical challenge of making every shot count. Factions in this era are going to be most specific to Inner Sphere right now because this is pre-Clan Invasion, which will be the next era we go into. One of the key things that's really nice about the Succession War is that generally anything you paint here moving forward through the timeline is going to exist in perpetuity towards the end for the most part. There are a few exceptions, but if you're painting Inner Sphere mechs now and you have some buddies who want to play Clan Invasion, you can grab those units, move over to Clan Invasion, and in general, you'll still be able to play with those. Next, we've got the Clan Invasion from 3050 to 3062. For those who love the idea of technological, technologically superior warriors challenging the status quo, this era brings high-tech weapons, powerful mechs, and new factions, the clans. If you're looking for a faster, more intense battlefield with mechs that can dish out a ton of damage, the clan invasion will be your jam. It's also great for players who enjoy asymmetrical warfare with the clan tech pitted against the scrappier interfere tech. As I mentioned before, if you've got Inner Sphere stuff from the Succession Wars, you're generally going to be able to bring that over to the Clan Invasion era and play with your buddies who may want to play uh, a Clan Force themselves, or maybe you want to change things up and you want to play a Clan Force so that you play something different from what you've been painting. Again, all of the units you're going to be building in the Clan Invasion era here will be building off of your Inner Sphere stuff from the Succession Wars, and you will be able to take those, for the most part, in perpetuity, all the way through the timeline and all the eras. So whatever you may be painting in the Clan Invasion era, those mechs are generally going to be useful moving forward in the timeline. Some factions come and go, but the actual units, the models, generally are going to be okay. If you pick them up, you should be able to play with those. In terms of how the gameplay is going to be played on the tabletop, when, it, when I mentioned asymmetry, it has a lot to do with how clan um, society functions um, in the lore, and if you're playing that way on the tabletop for lore and fluff reasons, it's going to lead to very asymmetrical battles where the clan player may be fielding, um, maybe let's say a star, five mechs, and maybe pitted off against eight or more intersphere mechs because of the way the points line up. They have a very, very um, tight grasp on quality. Inner Sphere really brings quantity. Next up, we're going to be going into the Civil War era from 3062 to 3067. Maybe you like a mix of the old and new tech together, that era will be perfect for you. In this period, Inner Sphere factions have begun to adopt clan technology, but with the chaos of internal conflicts and shifting alliances. This era is ideal for players who love political intrigue alongside their battles. Veterans who want more variety in their armies, combining old tech with clan innovations, will find this era to be a playground of possibilities. As I mentioned before, if you're going from Succession Wars through Clan Invasion and then you decide you want to go into the uh, Civil War era, um, generally if you've been painting stuff in each one of those, those units are going to continue to be useful for the most part. Or if you've purchased stuff, if you bought a uh, Marauder, a Warhammer, you know, insert, whatever from the Succession Wars, that's useful in the Clan Invasion, also going to be useful in the Civil War. The big deal is the asymmetrical battle stuff starts to shift because that clan tech starts to uh, really uh, be um, proliferated, I think might be the word, um, or spread out through the Inner Sphere ranks as well. Clanners were defeated, their tech was taken and adopted by the Inner Sphere um, faction. So you're going to see a lot less... Um, a lot less of a split between what units people feel because everything kind of starts to get intermingled. Next, we have the Jihad era from 3068 to 3085, where religious zealotry and widespread devastation take center stage. This is for players who want high stakes conflict with brutal battles and a darker narrative. The technology here is mixed, with, uh, but the tone is harsh. Expect to see some pretty devastating weapons and all out war on a scale that changes the entire inner sphere. This era is perfect for players who enjoy a more narrative driven campaign with high impact on or high impact consequences. So this is one of the eras that does have some caveats to the units. So again, if you were going from Succession Wars to Clan Invasion to Civil War. Generally, those models you have purchased will still be useful as you move forward. When you hit the uh, Jihad era the, with the the, um, uh, the factions that are here, 
you're starting to see um, the rise of Word of Blake, which is a kind of religious uh, fanatical um, adaptation of the Comstar forces. They end up creating a bunch of unit types and um, uh, mechs and so forth that in general exist in this era and then never exist again. Um, this is the one area where if you decided you wanted to play Word of Blake and you got their very specific mechs from this era, and then you decided you wanted to move forward in the timeline, uh, if you wanted to be correct uh, to the fluff and what would be listed on the master unit list, if you guys haven't seen my breakdown on that, check out my channel. That's where you, you go to do your list building and find out what units are available for what factions in what era. Um, if you play Word of Blake, you're very restricted. They're going to be very, very good in the Jihad era. Post-Jihad era, those units might not adapt very well because the faction no longer exists and the units have gone extinct. Um, if you go back to Succession Wars and you're playing Comstar, which sort of becomes uh, Word of Blake uh, to some degree, most of that stuff in the Succession War is generally probably going to be carrying over through the timelines until Comstar no longer exists. But those units, if you bought them, those models still may be useful. So if you bought like a King Crab and then you decide not to paint it as Comstar, that King Crab is still useful in other eras. If you bought some of the, uh, the mechs that are, are specific Word of Blake mechs, they're generally Word of Blake only, and then those mechs aren't usable outside of that era for the most part. So when you approach this one, if you're trying to forge a, uh, a narrative and play with your friends and you want to have uh, forces fighting off against the Jihad, uh, or not Jihad, the Word of Blake uh, forces, be aware that the Word of Blake player uh, may be investing time and money into a force that can really only be played here. So just know that. Moving forward, if you're a, a fan of dynamic shifts in power, the Dark Age era might grab your attention. This is from the 3085 to 3150. This era represents a decline in tech and political unity, followed by a resurgence of new power, uh, powers rising from the ashes. For new players, it's a fresh start with some familiar elements, and for veterans, it's a chance to see how the evolving universe changes old tactics. Plus, with the technology fluctuating, it offers a lot of flexibility in army building. So as, as I've mentioned before, <laughs> again, which is a theme we're going here, if you take your succession war units that have gone into the clan invasion, that stuff's gone into the, uh, the Jihad era, or the Civil War rather, then that's gone into the Jihad era. As long as you weren't playing War of Blake, you can take the, all that stuff leading to then and moving into the clan invasion era and generally 95 probably percent of all that stuff you've bought or painted is still going to have unit entries usable in that era in the in some way uh, on the master unit list so whatever you're investing in on the timeline at the start it continues moving forward things don't go backward the other nice thing with the dark age era is there's a lot of new units there's some new stuff that's coming out from ironwood metals and hopefully plastics in the future as well and if you're one of your first forays into the battletech universe was mechware dark age clicks um, this is that era and you're going to see some of the iconic mechs like the savage wolf with the new ironwind metals um, metal version that came out which is so good so um, there may be a lot of things that might tug on your heartstrings for this era in a variety of ways but just be aware if you invest in something and at the beginning of the timeline as long as you weren't doing word of blake your mo models are probably still useful in this one or this era as well and finally for the last section here we arrive at the ill clan era which is 31 uh 3151 and beyond right now uh, this is uh, in this area is where the ultimate question of leadership over the inner sphere takes center stage. This is the cutting edge of Battletech lore with some of the most advanced technology and intense conflicts to date. For veterans who have been who love being on the bleeding edge of the story and for players looking to explore the future of the Battletech universe, this era offers the most advanced gameplay with plenty of surprises. Right now in the um, the Ill Clan era, that is where the the most recent um, publications for the the continuation of the story have have taken place. This is the cutting edge, the line in the sand where the not, like anything that comes out could be new. We, we're looking out on the horizon. We don't know what's coming yet for the story. Uh, so this has been the uh, a big jump from uh, what they have done uh, previ in previous years. So going against the Ill Clan is like going if it would be like warmer 40k going from warmer 40k to warmer 50k like this is the new era which is really really good uh, again as i mentioned before wherever you are on the timeline if you started uh, at the early portion of the timeline buying units you can move those units through all the eras in general for most of them and still play with them so if you have a friend who wants to play ill clan era and you bought stuff in the so or the clan invasion era those models generally are still going to be useful which is really good the flip side is there's some really baller strong units that come out in the dark asian ill clan era so you may may be uh, incentivized to uh, pick up some of those models to uh, to have some of the new fresh tech, which is not necessarily a bad thing. The one thing that I will say is you can move forward down the timeline, Succession Wars to Clan Invasion, and use all your models you've been purchasing. You can't go backwards and make it make sense. It, the gameplay rules will let you play whatever you want because the rules tell you how they work, but if you take a Savage Wolf um, from the Dark Age era and you drop it into the Succession Wars era, it may create an imbalance or just not make any sense. So. If you are moving forward to the t through the timeline to play with your friends, like say if you and I want to play and I really want to play Clan Invasion and you only had stuff from the, or not Clan Invasion, I want to play um, Ill Clan and you only had stuff from the Clan Invasion uh, Kickstarter, we could still play and it makes sense because your, your units did not cease to exist. They moved forward during the timeline. 
me bringing them backwards to go play in Clan Evasion with you doesn't make as much sense, right? Um, because that stuff never existed. So anything you invest in the timeline to play with your friends, you can move forward and play with them. But if you're choosing an era to play in, just be aware if you choose the cutting edge, um, you know, line in the sand, this is where all the new fluff is, and you buy a bunch of Dark Age and Ill Clan era specific models, you might have a harder time finding people to play with versus, or, or play in eras with people versus if you buy stuff in those other eras, you can kind of pick and choose and play in the other ones. So um, what I like to do is build a force and as I move through the eras, start adding on stuff so I can spruce them up a little bit. So if I'm playing Succession Wars, I play Faction A. If I play in the Clan Invasion, I play Faction A plus with some stuff. If I go into Civil War, I play Act Faction A plus plus because I'm getting Clan stuff. And then War to, or the Jihad, you know, whatever. And then the Dark Age and so on. So, like, I'm adding on. And then if I go backwards to play in an, an era with a friend who doesn't have stuff to play in the, the future eras, I'll just start moving things out of my, my uh, allocation for list building. And then when I move down the timeline, I add a little bit more. But those initial models, the initial core that I painted, are still useful, which is really, really nice. So with all that being said, which era is best for you? If you're new, the Succession Wars offer a great starting point with simpler tech and classic straightforward warfare. If you want to jump into more chaotic battlefield with tons of tech variety, then the Civil War Dark Age eras might be the way to go. But if you're a veteran craving advanced strategy or narrative-driven games, the Clan Invasion, Jihad, or Ill Clan eras might be calling your name. There's no wrong answer, just pick the one that excites you the most. As I mentioned before, making sure you balance the hobby side of that so you know what you're buying uh, and where it can be played so that you can make sure you maximize your gameplay opportunities. Battletech is all about telling your story on the battlefield, so choose your era, pick your mechs, and make your mark. Thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment below on which era you're the most excited to play in or your favorite in general. As always, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Keep painting your models, keep rolling your dice, and I will catch you guys next time. If you made it this far, you're probably a viewer that already hits that like button when you see a video come up. You're probably already a subscriber, and you probably jump into the comments down below to help support the channel, to help support that algorithm. But if you're looking for some other ways to help support the channel too, make sure you check the description down below. Maybe you want to pick up some paints from Monument Hobbies. That's my paint of choice. The Pro Acrylic line is chef's kiss good stuff maybe you want to check out some of the offerings from death designs where i work in my day job we got plenty of 3d printed uh, products as well as mdf terrain some of the stuff that i have designed myself and we play with here on the channel and if you're looking to bolster your battletech uh, ranks miniatures and offerings make sure you check out uh, bobby from fortress miniatures and games he's one of the main supporters of the channel as well and supporting any of these companies helps support what i do and helps to ensure that i can continue to bring content to all of you if you want to become a super supporter, I highly recommend you guys check out the Patreon. You guys get the extra little edge to help push more content out, and I really do appreciate that. And my ultimate goal on the channel is to continue to be able to not, not only put out the content we have now, but to get to a point where you can put out more content later, whether that be battle reports or painting tutorials, or just more rambles, anything at all. I'd like to be doing more content for you. This is something that I enjoy. I like being able to cast a light into the darkness to bring a little bit of hobby positivity to all of you and make you feel good and also enjoy playing games myself. As we do the final sign off here though, I do want to go ahead and switch on over and do the, the scroll of awesome to showcase all the Patreon supporters, the super supporters of the channel to give them some recognition for helping support what I do. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys next time.